I'm Vicki. I'm Josh. We're with Backroad Bus Life. And this is our art project on wheels. So this is our bus, Mr. Nimbus. It's an international IC 3000, 2004. It's got the DT466 in it, that like million mile engine. It's also only 30 feet. A lot of national parks, you can't go on a lot of the roads if you're over 30 feet. We didn't have to deal with wheel wells in our bus because our bus is on airbags. So our bus actually airs up at like another four inches higher than what it is right now. This door was the original bus door, the framing of it. Welded it together and did all this wood cladding, but it's actually the original bus door. This is actually one of our most recent additions. One of the couples that lived in the apartment complex when we were cutting the bus in half that lived right above it had a bunch of really high-end piece of live edge out on her farm and her dad started following us and saw what we did with our woodworking and he's like, oh, you guys could do a lot better with this wood than anybody in my family. So he actually gave us some of these pieces and he now since has passed. So it's really special. Our, our water heater, so the access panel to it here. Outdoor storage, so we built all these storage boxes. I got my welder, I got my table saw. This is where our propane is at and we have an extra tank always. Gray tank down here, wrapped it in Reflectix and I still actually need to insulate this part here because we did have some freezing issues just in this section here but this uh, diamond plate metal was free metal was very expensive throughout this build so anything that we could use for free we did <laughs> we wanted a bus with a handicapped door because we wanted this access point our garage is this bottom half here and then the top half it's actually accessed from the inside. So I've got all my drills, you know, and they all slip in here. Everything pretty much actually stays in place while we're driving too. Our cat box is here in the garage area. And it slides out on a drawer pull. Then you can clean the cat box from the outside. So we did the roof raise, right? So we also had to stretch the door. So when we did that, I decided that I was gonna make it a Dutch door. So you can have the top half open if you want keep this part closed and just kind of let the breeze come in. Fresh water tank, which is underneath our bed. We have 125 gallons of fresh water. And then I have a hose bib for outside. We have a, a mini split. We just ran the AC for the first time the other day off of solar. It was around 600 watts. You can see up top we have our Starlink. It really changed the game for us having internet in these areas. This is uh, also a newer addition, our Catio. Big shout out to our friends Bohemian Nomads for showing us the way with this. This is actually a dog kennel that breaks down and gets like pretty flat and then so we can store it inside and when we get somewhere like this, we just hook it up onto those hooks and use a little bit of foam to pad the window. And that's about it for the outside. Uh, let's hand it off to Vicky and she'll show you the inside. This video is sponsored by G-Story. Born for games and fighting for legends present the 14-inch portable monitor for Xbox Series S, the ultimate gaming experience. This portable monitor is tailor-made for Xbox Series S, ensuring seamless integration and portability to bring the thrill of game anywhere, anytime. Don't miss out. Order now on Amazon for just $329 and use the code G-Story to get a $10 discount. Click the link below and become a part of G Stories legacy today and remember to subscribe. We both hit a point in the restaurant industry that we just didn't have the time that we wanted to be able to explore. We lived in Colorado in this beautiful state, but we never had the time to do it. We both had spent time on the road living out of cars. I was forced to by the price hike in San Francisco, so I was living out of my vehicle actually when we met, mm -hmm. and she had been traveling with friends. So we were like, what if we were to do it right? And that was when we started like researching, watching thousands of hours of YouTube. We made this choice, but our animals didn't. Um, so we wanted to make sure that they were gonna be happy and comfortable. We kind of had budgeted ourselves around like 25,000 was basically what we said for all and done. But we were working at the time too. So like right. in the bank, we probably yeah, had like, maybe eight grand. And then the pandemic 
Well, I mean, the panic would already hit, but like I, I got let go as a chef. We took advantage of it, and I just dove really deep into it. I mean, Vicky was there too, as much as she possibly could, but she was working six days a week there. Everything doubled, tripled in price. Everything got crazy. Got to the point where we were like completely running out of money. It was like, just move into the bus. Yeah. We're not ready. Move into the bus. Yeah. <laughs> it was like negative 28 the first night we moved in the bus. We definitely had lots of difficulties throughout the build, but we made it through and it only made us stronger. And like, honestly, that's why we know that nothing can really hold us back at this point. We have a little shoe storage here on the side. We're still working on getting everything organized in there. This is actually our original first aid kit from the bus. Smart to have a first aid kit anyway on the road. And then we have kind of our little like altar space. I have enough rocks and crystals and minerals and things that it kind of just took it over. This is our cat perch area. Inside of here is all of our electrical. We have about 1,300 watts of solar. Batteries, we just have the two 200 amp hours of a 24 volt system. And they're SOK batteries. We have the grow watt, which is the charge controller and inverter. We had some problems with it, so we're using the grow out as just our inverter, but we also have the Renogy charge controller as well. One of the first things that we actually did for the build while we didn't even have the bus is our table. You take these poles and insert them into the middle piece of the couch, and then it slips over the pole there. So that's just half of it, which is really nice when it's just the two of us. And once it's all together, it's actually pretty stable. We inlaid a bunch of stones in the top of it so that we could put like a hot pot down and not have to worry so much about the heat of it. We also do have the capability of pulling this whole thing out. That way, if we have a guest, they can stay with us here. We also sometimes set it down and we'll hang up our projector screen here, which is what these binder clips are here for. It's just to clip our projector screen up really fast. We actually repurposed the back door of a Jeep Grand Cherokee and used it as our skylight. So it opens up here. We will be getting gas struts in the future, just haven't quite gotten there yet. All of our kitchen cabinets were reclaimed. So this was actually like DVD and CD storage from somebody's entertainment center. This was like a file cabinet that we use for our toaster oven and air fryer combo. Obviously, you can see there's a ton of live edge in our build. We really, really like the look of it. At the time we were building, we were getting the wood that's live edge for cheaper than we could buy a two by four. Definitely one of our biggest thing is the countertop. The front piece is separate from the back piece. That's actually what the river is poured over is the seam of the two pieces of live edge. And then there's actually like different mosses and stones that are laid into the countertop. On this side, we have our Berkey, which we use all day, every day. Have this just to monitor where we are. It'll show like the high and low in the past 24 hours. This is our controls for our Furion hot water heater. And then this is the, our, our controller for our diesel heater, which is actually right here. So we have to put a door in front of it because otherwise our cat will try to lay inside of the diesel heater. And then our hot water heater is actually under here too, so you can kind of see the back of it from there. The rest of it is storage for like our bowls and things. So this is kind of our craft space. So this folds up here into a bench so that we can work in here, which has been great. And then it's really nice being next to this window too that we can prop open and get fresh air too. So you're still getting the view and feeling like you're outside even when you're inside. And then we have the cubic mini wood burning stove back here as well, which has been amazing. And then there's the light that this was 100% Josh. I take no credit for this whatsoever. He took all four of those panels and laid them and like routed them out separately and then put it all together and added all of the stones and it's just totally mind blowing. And then back here's the bathroom. We did a hallway style bathroom. So to take a shower, you'll close both of the doors off. We use these copper panels that we actually got on Amazon. They are plastic, so they're super lightweight. Uh, we were kind of worried at first about how hard it would be to keep clean, but it really isn't bad at all, uh, and it works great for us. 
So we do have a DIY composting toilet. And then we also do have our skylight over the shower as well, which is really nice just to be able to help vent. And then the inside of this door is actually resined too. So when you're actually in here, it's like very majestic. So this is our bedroom area. And something that's really, really cool that starts back here is our litter box actually for the cats. So they go into this little uh, spot here and they have to go up a ramp and around the corner to get into the litter box. Litter will fall out of their paws a little bit more so it stops it from getting into the bus. And then the cat's beds are back here as well. So they both have little tunnels in the back that they go into. And then the back door opens so both of them have a view to the outside if we have the back door propped open. When we built the shelves, there's actually a steel strip that we inlaid into the shelf and poured resin over so like things that have magnets can sit here while we're moving and don't have to we don't have to put them down I think really the last little tidbit in here is we have a little workstation so we can swing this monitor and then we have this little piece that drops down and have all of our stuff stored so that we can um, do work at the computer and everything here and just have a little desk workstation I feel like every time we do a trip, we figure out at least one thing to make it easier in the long run. I mean, there were a lot of really nice things that we have now that we did not start off with, and you just kind of realize that maybe you don't need everything to start, which I don't know if we maybe would have done the same thing if we weren't forced to move in quickly, but y you just kind of make it work. Yeah. Unleash the power of gaming with G-Story's 14-inch portable gaming monitor designed for champions and legends on Xbox Series S. This cutting-edge travel monitor transforms ordinary gaming sessions into extraordinary adventures. Experience unparalleled visuals and buttery smooth gameplay with FreeSync and HDR technology, taking your gaming to a whole new level. Custom built for the Xbox Series S, this portable monitor fits like a glove, enabling you to carry your gaming setup with ease. Join the G-Story revolution. Order your monitor now on Amazon for just $329 and save $10 with code G-Story. Click the link below and conquer the gaming world today. Thank you for watching and have a great week.